So tomorrow's gonna be brisket day. And if you know me, you know that means that today is getting the brisket ready and seasoned up, because I really like to get the brisket all rubbed up about 12 hours before it's gonna go on the smoker. But that also means we have to get a rub ready because I'm not using a store-bought commercial rub today. We're gonna to be making one this time, and it's gonna be a black garlic rub. Now I have my spice grinder out here because the black garlic granules are, you know, fairly large. They're like little diced up pieces of garlic. And black garlic is sort of a fermented dried garlic and it has sort of a real nuttiness to it. I really like it, but I do want to break it down a little bit. So we're going to get three tablespoons of it into my spice grinder. And we're just going to pulse this until we have it broken down. Oh, and there are some garlic fumes coming off this right now. Says he still have a few big chunks in there. Pulse it a little bit more. Look at that. <laughs> it's like some science experiment. I'm just going to leave the lid on this, going to let those granules settle, and we're going to start assembling the rest of our rub before we add this black garlic. First ingredient is going to be a third of a cup of kosher salt. Next up, third of a cup of a coarsely ground black pepper. Third of a cup of granulated garlic. Now because that black garlic and the garlic in this has a little bit of a pungent bite, I want to mellow it a little bit. So I'm adding half a tablespoon of turbinado sugar. Now if you don't have turbinado sugar, you can use sort of an unprocessed cane sugar or even brown sugar. Finally, our broken down black garlic. We're just going to whisk this together gently. The brisket I'm going to be doing is about a 15 pound USDA prime brisket. Let's go ahead and transfer this to a shaker bottle. Because I don't want to spill this, I'm going to do it with a spoon. And I'm still going to spill some as you just saw there. There's a great smell from this. Our last little bit in here. Put the lid on. We'll give that a good shake in there too. All right, the rub's ready. Let's get our brisket out here. So here is our USDA Prime brisket. There's not a lot of talking to do here. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this up. I always say I'm not an expert. I do the best I can. I'm a backyard cook, but it's gonna be a great brisket when we're done with it out at the grill tomorrow. So let's trim it up. All right, I'm happy with that. I don't want to massacre it anymore. It's definitely not a competition trim because I'm not a competition cook. But we're gonna go ahead and get this seasoned up. Now, I normally don't use binders. I often say that there's plenty of moisture on the surface, but when there isn't, I will use a little bit of a binder. Right here, it is a little dry. I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of soy sauce. You can use mustard, you could use Worcestershire sauce, whatever you want, just a little bit here. And we season. Go ahead and turn this over. First, I want to get this edge real quick. And this side seems to have a good amount of moisture. It was the fat side that seemed dry, so we're just going to go here as it is. That garlic is smelling fairly awesome and it's a distinct scent from the garlic powder because it, like I said, it does have that sort of nuttiness to it. All right, I am happy with that. This is gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. I'm gonna leave it uncovered. We're just gonna let these flavors absorb. I do have it on a rack in my baking sheet I like to do that to keep it up off the surface if possible because you might get some moisture and then you have it pooling in there and it can pull that rub off that you've just put on. So I like to do it like this if possible. And when we do get this on the smoker, it's gonna be going fat side down. I get so many questions from people asking why I do things like this fat side down. I've done them fat side up, fat side down. I know the prevailing wisdom is if you do it fat side up, the fat bastes the meat and helps keep it moist. I've done it both ways. I've personally never noticed a difference in that doing much. But what I do notice is 
if the fat is on the bottom and you move this off of the cooking grate, you might mar the bark, but that's the bark on the fat side, not on this meat side. If this meat side is down and you're taking this off the cooking grate, some of that bark can sometimes be disturbed. And I've had that happen. So personally, that's why I like to do this fat side down. So let's go ahead, get this in the refrigerator, and I'll see you out at the grill tomorrow. All right, the Lone Star Grills is up to temp. My target temperature today is between 250 and 275. If it goes a little above that, a little below that, I'm not gonna be worried, but that's my range. I've got about half a gallon of water in the water chamber and I'm burning post oak today. So let's go ahead and get our brisket on. Get my temperature probe in here. That's looking good, 36-ish degrees. This is fresh out of the refrigerator. All right, I'm gonna close this up. We're gonna let this go and we're gonna check it in about two hours. All right, we are at the two hour mark. Our internal temperature is about 65 degrees. I've added two splits of wood, one for every hour. I usually start with two to build a bed of coals and then usually it's about one per hour. So let's go ahead and check our brisket, see if we need to spritz. That is looking really good. Nice color on that. But it does look a little dry, so I think we're gonna spritz. Just a light spritz and what I'm using is a 50-50 mixture of water and apple cider vinegar. That's looking really good. We're gonna let this go another two hours and then we'll check it again. So we are at the four hour mark now. Things have been going great. Just adding one split of wood every hour. Our internal temp is about 127 degrees. Let's go ahead and check this brisket. That's got some great color on it. And I think I'm gonna spritz it again. All right, I'm gonna close it up, let it keep going, and I'll bring you back when we hit the stall and it's time to wrap this. All right, we're a little over 147 degrees, not quite six hours into this, and we're not at the stall yet, but the wind is kicking up. It's forecast now to start hitting around 20 miles an hour. And even though that's not a huge deal with the offset, I don't like to cook in winds that are that high, plus filming in that is not fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this brisket now and we're gonna finish it in the oven. This has just phenomenal color on it. All right, I'm gonna get that into a foil pan that's just gonna rest there in the oven on a couple little foil balls that'll keep it up out of the juice that accumulates. And I'll see you inside when it's time to check this brisket for tenderness. So after five hours unwrapped outside and then five hours wrapped in the oven, our brisket just hit 203 degrees internal. 203 is a good temperature for me. That's what I like to probe at to see if we're at tenderness. It usually is at that point tender. And today we got thrown a curveball by the weather, by the wind kicking up. And again, I could have probably ridden it out if I wasn't filming, but it just gets to be such a hassle with the wind noise and things moving around and cameras wanting to tip over. So sometimes you just have to play it by ear Bring it inside, put it in the oven. Heat is heat once it's wrapped. Now, I probably would have gone another hour out there unwrapped, so we would have been six hours unwrapped and four wrapped probably, but 
it really doesn't matter. We ended up with the same time. And now we're just gonna probe for tenderness to make sure we are tender. I'm just gonna come at the side here. Gotta get through the paper first. Yeah, that point is tender. At this point, the point is usually tender. Sometimes a flat may have a little bit of resistance, but let's see. Actually, that feels pretty tender too. Yeah, I don't need to punch a dozen holes in here to see. This is tender for me right now, but it's not ready to eat. We need to let this rest for two hours. So I'm gonna top this right now and seal it with two layers of foil. And now this is just gonna sit on top of my stove for two hours, just slowly coming down in temp a little bit and continuing to tenderize. My oven's off, I could throw it back in there and just let it sit in there, but I don't really want any more of that heat getting into it. It's tender, I don't wanna dry any part of it out. So this is gonna go sit over on top of the stove for a couple hours, and I'll see you in a while. So here is our brisket. Absolutely happy with the color. That bark looks terrific. It rested for two hours. And just as a little experiment here, I wanna check the temperature after resting so we can just see how hot it is inside. Because a lot of people are surprised at how much temperature remains in a brisket after resting for two hours. And I didn't even wrap it in towels in an ice chest to really retain heat. This was just in its paper wrapping in a foil pan with foil on top. So let's see here. I'm gonna go in point down here. Let me see if you can see this right here. That's showing 180 degrees if you can see that there. So yes, a brisket will retain a lot of temperature resting. You can rest these for much longer than two hours. I've seen people rest these for 10 hours in the right container. It's just amazing. But two hours is enough for me here. I'm gonna go ahead and slice in. Now we've got our flat here, point here. A lot of times I will separate the two, but today I'm just gonna go right across here and we're gonna get a good slice out of the middle. So let's see. Get through that bark. Let's just do a little turn here so we can see. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is looking really good. Let me get a full slice out of here. And we definitely have a juice -a today. Ooh, this has a little bit of point right here, our flat right here, that looks terrific. A nice smoke ring and very, very hot as you can see and extremely bendy. So let me set this piece aside here and I am gonna take the rest of this flat off the top of the point. And it's very simple to do. You just run your knife along. You can even do it with the backside sometimes with that fat separation there. And the point runs with an opposite direction of the grain. So we're gonna turn. Oh yeah, <laughs> that is falling apart tender. That is terrific. All right, let's cut some of this up and have a taste here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the point at the end as I continue to mess up my board. Let me get some of this flat over here. I'm gonna separate it from the piece of the point that was connected to it. Cut a few pieces there. Let's cut some of our point up. And I've mentioned this in a video before, but one thing you can do to help combat potential dryness in the flat, because it can happen, the flat is just not as fatty as the point, you can get some dryness there, is when you have your brisket wrapped, save the juices from whatever wrapping you have it in here. Here's a little bowl of it. You can brush this on the pieces of the flat. It really helps. But right now I'm ready for a taste. Let's go with a piece of the flat right here first. Cheers. Mm. That garlic rub is not overpowering, but it is definitely there. It is terrific. Mm. Now for some point with that bark on it. Let's see. Fantastic flavor, fantastic juiciness. I'm 100% happy with this. And that bark just turned out perfect. 